Back in 2003, we made a solar movie, and it was about a climate sensible design or a solar house design anywhere in the world. And the reason we made that was because we felt that people needed to understand uh, better about the principles and what went into the design of a solar house and how the climate in different locations would affect the outcomes of that design. Now more than ever before is it clear that the choices we make have a direct bearing on our environment. Whether it's your government's reliance on burning fossil fuel to produce electricity to our own everyday decisions, our contribution to landfill or the size and age of the car we choose to drive, everything has a certain cost to the environment. It's actually very rare that we do anything positive for the environment outside repairing the damage we've already done. Again, this is not so much good for the environment as it is about you doing less damage to the environment. This can be achieved by designing your home to use less energy in heating and cooling. Less energy consumption means lower electricity bills, another benefit of something called climate sensible design. For the first timers at the course, they see it as a revelation. They generally come along with a general interest in uh, uh, climate sensible design. They believe that it should be done, but they don't realise what can be achieved and what the impact can be on the environment, the community and their, their own comfort and their own energy bills. So what are these climate sensible design principles? Well there are five basic principles and their order of priority really depends on the climate to which they're being applied. The temperate climate could best be described as Mediterranean, plenty of sunlight all year round, dry and warm to hot in summer and moderate rainfall in winter. The overall aim is to keep the interior cool in summer when outside temperatures can reach in excess of 40 degrees Celsius while at the same time retaining the heat from the winter sun where the mercury can dip to zero. Sounds like an impossible task but it can be done and very effectively too. The first principle to consider is house orientation to best utilise the sun's path from dawn to dusk. Taking into account Perth's latitude and the sun's higher zenith in summer than winter, houses here are best built with a northern orientation. In this temperate climate, that ratio of window area is high. Around 52% of the total northern facade is recommended and to restrict heat loss on the opposite side of the house, windows should only make up 10% of the southern facade. Thermal mass is the ability to absorb, store and then slowly radiate heat, so good thermal mass capability results in a much more stable temperature range indoors. And this happens to be another very important climate sensible design principle, cross ventilation, taking advantage of the breezes during different times on a summer's day to cool the house down. This principle is another factor that affects window placement and also determines the location of doors in your home's design. Where possible, there should be two windows in a room to allow fresh air to flow through. While we're in the attic, let's look at the importance of effective insulation and how it helps to maintain stable indoor temperatures. Insulation is a major player in keeping a house cool in summer and warm in winter. How? By slowing down heat transfer from hot to cool areas. In this temperate climate, insulation with a thermal resistance rating of 2 is recommended for the roof and R1 insulation for the wall cavities. The point I'm trying to make is that solar design principles are universal. Their priorities change though according to the geographical location of the building concerned. Now that was climate sensible design being applied in four different climates. Plenty of examples of the choices you have to turn these good ideas and good science into action. Again, the benefits from a bit of planning and lateral thinking are a 60 to 90% reduction in energy bills, natural instead of artificial comfort in your home for longer periods, your reduced demand for electricity means less government expenditure on power stations, which also translates to between 6 and 30 tonnes less carbon dioxide being produced each year. Well, that was a brief snapshot of climate sensible designs living in a home that breathes. This DVD can be purchased on our website and there is a downloadable version of it. I'd recommend that you have a look at it because it's, there's a lot more detail than shown in this snapshot.